Right. This is R2D Tech. Today is the day. It's the day you've been waiting for. The iPhone 10. We're going to be going through the specs of this phone, but also going through reasons why you might want to or might not want to buy it. The rear 12 megapixel camera has two lenses, one of them a telephoto lens and one of them a wide angle lens. Combined, this allows you to carry out features such as portrait mode because it allows the camera to sense the depth of the photo. They both have optical stabilization and of course with the telephoto lens you have mechanical zoom as well as digital zoom. With the rear camera you can also film in 4K video which is pretty impressive. The front facing camera is a 7 megapixel camera with true depth technology. This also allows it to carry out portrait mode and other features such as Animoji. This also allows the Face ID technology which we'll talk about later. This phone has been rated one of the fastest in 2017 with its A11 Bionic chip which is actually made by Apple. Unfortunately it only has 3GB of RAM which is pretty poor compared to its competitors. This may leave you with some performance issues but with its chip it should make up for this. The phone comes in two models, the 64GB model and the 256GB model. This leaves you with some room to decide how much you're going to need. Obviously one will be a lot more expensive compared to the other. The 5.8 inch OLED display has true tone technology with 2,346 by 1,125 pixels. This becomes a very impressive display which is obviously extremely good especially because it's made by Samsung, one of Apple's biggest competitors. <laughs> However, never mind all of that, this is an incredibly good display and gets very bright and brings out the full colour spectrum of our world. This phone has a height of 143.6mm, a width of 70.9mm and a depth of 7.7mm. I swear! This puts it at quite a small size compared to other phones, which I personally like, but some people say they prefer a larger display. It weighs 174 grams, which is pretty good for this year. And carrying it around, I didn't really notice it too much in my pocket. The iPhone X has an IP67 water resistance. This means that it can go into water, and Apple says that it can go in up to one meter of water for 30 minutes. This is good, but it's not great, considering the Samsung S8 allows you to go into up to 5 meters of water for this amount of time. Another flaw with this phone, a huge flaw, is the fact that it doesn't have a headphone jack. Most phones this year have gotten rid of it as well, relying on Bluetooth technology when using headphones or earphones, but Samsung have managed to keep this on, and I don't see why Apple have taken it away. Perhaps it was too early. Possibly the most controversial thing about this phone is the notch, which includes a true depth camera which allows for selfies and also Face ID. Face ID is the only way of unlocking your phone unless you want a password. Apple seem to have foregone the fingerprint scanner which is still present on many phones. Although this is a very clever way to unlock your phone and it can be quite quick, it's still not as fast as a fingerprint scanner and also not as secure. But unlike some of Samsung's phones, you can't unlock it with a picture because it actually takes a 3D image of your face. The speakers on this phone sound really good considering they're only bottom firing speakers. Some people consider this to be a disadvantage, but personally I've heard it and it sounds really good. One thing which may disappoint you is the size of the battery. It's a 2716 milliamp hour battery. Although this may sound quite small, lots of people have tested this and come to the conclusion that it will last you a full day. This is mainly due to Apple's iOS software, which actually drains the battery less than an Android software would. Luckily this phone supports wireless charging. Now one downside of this is that the back of the phone has to be made out of glass and this costs £500 to replace on an iPhone X because they've connected all the components to it. So if you drop it and it cracks, which it will do quite easily, you might be in trouble. This is why most people use a skin or a case on the back of their phone. Obviously nothing major has changed on Apple's iOS software, but they have added a few things for the new iPhone X. Apple has a completely new gesture system for the iPhone X. If you want to access tabs, you have to swipe up 
and swipe across quickly. What am I trying to say here? You know, you know how it is. Get over it, you know. It's easy. Anyway, you know how to do that now. We've taught you something. Right, Siri. The only thing that's changed with Siri is now you actually have to hold down the power button to access Siri. To take a screenshot, this is, this is going to really get you. You have to press the power button and the volume up button or the volume down button. That's it for software really. Oh, there isn't a home button, so you have to swipe up on the little uh, bit at the bottom. There's a line. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. That's good. Just imagine a white line at the bottom of your iPhone. You just have to swipe up. The price. This is gonna get you guys, you know. You out there, it costs one thousand pounds or dollars that's the starting price it can go up to 1299 if you want the 256 gigabyte phone that's it from us this week but if you want more content like this then be sure to subscribe and like the video if you actually did like it but for now peace out